are Nikki and Carlo and our family live in Positano, Italy, nearly 500 steps from the road but surrounded by fruit and olive trees and with a fabulous view. Our garden overlooks the sea and we grow our own food. We show you what life is really like on the Amalfi Coast. So please subscribe and welcome to the Positano Diaries. It is time to leave Provence and carry on our journey. Ciao. I used to fall apart, lose myself and give my heart away. What are you doing, Alipo? That's what I love about driving around France is that you come across the most incredible places in the middle of nowhere. I used to sit and stare. Now the light runs through my lashes. Oh, it's taken 40 years. Blood is sweat and tears. Mm. We're about 20 minutes away from the French Italy border now. So we're about to come out of France and back into Italy. Are you yeah. happy? Hola! I'm happy, yes. And here's the sign to say that you're leaving France. Au revoir! And you go through the tunnel, and once you're out on the other side, there's a sign to tell you that you've arrived in Italy. Buongiorno Italia! And finally, after a never-ending seven-hour drive, <laughs> we have arrived at our destination for tonight. You might have seen this car park before. Where are we, Holly? Are we somewhere new? We have finally arrived at Marie and Lorenzo's Casa Colomba in Vico Pisano. I was here back in September and it rained. Hopefully it won't rain tomorrow. So we've arrived, we're just having some dinner, we're getting dinner ready. And we are staying in the medieval tower upstairs, which I will show you when we go up there later. Let me take you on a tour around the lovely Casa Colomba, available to rent in Vico Pisano, Tuscany. And as you walk in, you have this beautiful, cosy little sitting room here. You have a little puppy on the rug <laughs> and it's got a lovely big vaulted ceiling and then just around the corner here there's a little office area just a little nook and it's got a tiny little window looking over the rooftops there's a bathroom in here so lovely now the sun's coming through the windows it's even more lovely Puppy. Hello, puppy. This is the bedroom. It's lovely and warm in here, by the way, as well. The heating works really well, which is important for me. And then into the kitchen. Some of our stuff here now. So there's a little kitchen, functional kitchen with everything you need. And look, it's got this fantastic old nook here. Isn't that beautiful? The outdoor sun lounge. Now this is open. Ah, oh, this is where Carlo is. Hello. Hey, hello. <laughs> so this is like an outside room. There's no glass in the windows. There are mosquito nets, but no glass. So you've got a lovely view across Vico Pisano countryside. Some comfortable little day beds. It's so very nice here. I like it very, very carino.
We're going for a little walk around Vico Pisano across this old medieval bridge. Um, yeah, we were thinking of doing the digital ones. <laughs> Di nuovo! Quando il sole del mattino ci sveglia We're not sure what's going on Il tempo passa in fretta Quando siamo insieme noi È triste aprire quella porta Io resterò se vuoi Io resterò se vuoi Proprio tu L'unica donna per me oh. <laughs> Now we all know why Carlo doesn't sing. <laughs> oh, I like the way he sings. <laughs> <laughs> ma, ma, ma di chi è questa <laughs> canzone? Alan Sorrenti, si chiama così. Ah oh, sì? Yeah. Carlo is telling me off for not filming enough because we are chatting and chatting and chatting. But this is the view. We're doing a huge walk around town. And the nice thing is it's mainly on flat roads. Eh, mi piace da morire qua. Well, qua sembra la strada che, che abbiamo per andare a casa. Ulivi, magari c'è un Michele qua sopra da qualche parte <laughs> che sta potando gli alberi o raccogliendo qualcosa. Molto bello. Hello. You funny things. Sembrano così curiose. È tutta bagnata, si stanno nell'acqua. This is Marie, this Hi is everyone. who we're staying with and um, I wanted to ask a bit about Casa Colombo, where we're staying because it's such a beautiful place and it's obviously very very old so can you tell me a bit of how old it is? Yes, well it's a typical Tuscan tower house, dates back to the oldest part is the 12th century Wow. Um, so where Nick is sleeping in the tower that's the 12th century part of the house. Oh, I'm glad you didn't tell me that last night, I would have been terrified. <laughs> there's no ghosts, there's no ghosts. Okay. So uh, the rest of the house is slightly slightly newer so that dates back to probably like 1500s or something oh, like that so it's, it's a little bit newer so um yeah and it's a it's a house in a medieval center in a small medieval town and uh, what else can i tell you about it so what what where are we near we're near pisa aren't we yes yeah, so we're not far from pisa so why do we say our little corner of italy our little triangle so we're basically nestled between Pisa, Lucca and Florence. Okay. So Pisa's like 25 minutes away, Lucca's 30 minutes away, 35 minutes, and Florence you can do in 45 minutes to an hour. Brilliant. So, um, but what we love about the area is like we have all of this around us, all the olive trees. That's oh, stunning. Mm, very similar to Positano. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and of course we're not that far from the sea. So we're 20 minutes from the sea and we're going okay. to take Carla to the seaside later. Because Carla <laughs> wants to see what the beach is like here. Because we've never been to the beach in this area, apart from when I went with Celine to Livorno uh, a couple of months ago. So yeah, it's, it's a lovely area. The sun keeps coming and going today, but we've gone for a very long walk and it's a flat, flattish walk. <laughs> flattish. But it's, yeah, it's, there's been no step climbing, so that's a massive bonus for us. So um, Casa Colomba is available to rent, by the way. So I will leave all the details in the description box down below. If you are coming to Tuscany and you would like to stay somewhere off the beaten track, this is perfect and it's beautiful. I'm standing in the entranceway of Casa Colomba and these are the original doors here. These are medieval doors and the most interesting thing about them is here. This door has an original witch's mark on it, which was protection against witches in medieval times. Come and have a closer look. Well, the, beach, the beach here is all chunks of marble. I did not expect that. Nice there, it's the Venezia Quarter. Renza and Marie have brought us down to the beach. Now, I have never been to the beach in this area. This is sort of Pisa Marina and it's all white marble. It is incredible. Have a look at this. Miles and miles of white marble. I mean, how picturesque is that? Holly has found some new friends. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
It is time to leave Marie and Lorenzo in Vico Pisano. It's a six and a half hour drive back to Positano. So we are very, very nearly home. Anyway, we're gonna say goodbye to these guys, get in the car and be on our way. Oh, what though? I think a house in Ciao! <laughs> and back to Positano we go! Bye! Sporta a destra e prendi via le vie. <laughs> We're on our way back home. We decided we would take the coast road to Rome and then get back on the motorway. It's not really a coast road because you can't really see the coast much from here. We're going to stop just before Rome and have a quick walk on the beach, hopefully grab something for lunch and then try and get home before it gets too dark. See, are very much more of a moon. We have been away for 35 days we've been away. It's not what I planned. Well, I didn't really plan anything, but I didn't think we'd be away for this long. And I think this is possibly the longest we've ever been away from home. Sì, in assoluto questa è la mia vacanza più lunga che ho mai fatto. Yeah, yeah. So we've got lots of plans when we get back home, lots of things to do. And um, the first task is going to be getting everything out of this car and taking it all down the nearly 500 steps home. Hopefully we'll have a few little assistants. road at the castle of San Severo near Rome near Civitavecchia and we've just had a quick uh, sandwich in a bar by the castle and we're just walking down the side of the castle because the beach is right here yeah. the beach the beach <laughs> the beach is right here <laughs> Sono enormi! Le ha messo un gigante forse qua! The castle was built in the 14th century over an old Etruscan area known as Pyrigi. There's a lot of Etruscan ruins and remains around and you can see the remains of some of the Etruscan boats in the museum in the castle. Wow! Non sarà come i castelli francesi, ma anche noi abbiamo qualche castello. For over 500 years, it was owned by the Order of the Holy Spirit and was also a vacation spot for many popes. In the Second World War, it was taken over by the Germans and nowadays it's owned by the region of Lazio and is open all year round with a couple of museums and remains of a medieval village inside. Ecco, la nostra avventura è terminata praticamente. È stato bellissimo andare in giro. Sono veramente felice di aver lasciato il lavoro perché altrimenti non avrei potuto fare questo. Ho conosciuto tante nuove persone, tanti nuovi posti ed è una cosa fantastica per me, per noi. Didn't you say you were going to say that in English? Oh my god.
I have come back. Go sit down, my love. Where are we? Are you excited? And now begins the laborious task of emptying the car. And slowly, slowly, getting it down 500 steps home. We're starting off by taking it to the Fabra, the forge, and some bags already in here. We have called for assistance um, uh, about half an hour ago. Our assistance has not arrived yet. Sky and Nicola, where are they? We need their help, definitely. Um, yeah, I'm not moving without them because there's a lot to bring down. <laughs> Y de Pucci. ¿A qué tú si le dan la mano? And here they are. We brought it all down, the three of us. Carla is still faffing up at the road somewhere, but we managed to get all of this down and we've emptied the car. <laughs> we did it. We brought everything home. And we're home. And we're loving it. Nothing's changed. Weather's been good. We have lemons. And we're happy to be home. Well, has immediately found a million things to do in the garden. And I thought I would go through with you some of the technicalities of driving from, <laughs> from Positano to London. So you can do it in 21 hours. Uh, the, we've done it once we did it and we drove from here to Milan. We stopped overnight in Milan and then we drove straight from Milan all the way to Surrey uh, in one long go. It can be done, it can be done with two people and it's just a long drive so we've always preferred to just split it up into a few different days and go a different route each time and visit lots of places. So normally we'll drive for like five or six hours, sometimes seven, get to one place and then stop overnight. Um, you have to pay tolls all the way through Italy and France and the Euro Tunnel is um, uh, about 135 euro to get through but that's for the car with all the participants all the people that inside the car uh, what else do you have to pay for um, obviously if you're going to stop overnight you're going to have to pay for somewhere to stay unless you're staying with friends we were very lucky this time this is actually the first time that we have stopped and stayed with friends pretty much all the way along the way and we have met some wonderful people we've made some really good new friends and I really really enjoyed every second of being with all the people that we stayed with along the way. Holly is a great traveller nowadays she absolutely loves being in the car with us and um, there's no problem driving around with her if you're driving through Europe and you want a cheap place to stay with a dog, um, I can always recommend the Ibis chain of hotels. They're really cheap, really um, comfortable beds, um, just very, very easy and dogs are always welcome. So that's what we use as a standby place, as you would have seen when we're in Dijon. So that's pretty much all I have to say. Um, welcome back home. We'll get down to some lovely videos here in Positano now. And... That's it. Vuoi vedere qualcosa? Oh sì. Allora, molte persone hanno chiesto, eh, molte persone, qualcuno ha chiesto delle informazioni. Quanto è speso di benzina per arrivare fino in Inghilterra e tornare? Mm. Beh, direi che abbiamo speso tipo 500, 600. Yeah, it's about 5 or 600 euro on petrol, tolls. One time we actually kept a record of how much we spent, but this time we just, we just went for it. We just wanted to get back and spend that time with my dad, which was absolutely lovely. So uh, we normally do this every two years. Obviously two years ago we couldn't do it. So the next time we do this for Christmas will probably be Christmas 2023. 
Hope you enjoyed this series of videos. As of next video, we will be back to normal scheduling videos from Positano. Back to the Positano Diaries. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time. Ciao a tutti! Bye!